Good morning and welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is John Bloom and I'm a consultant at Pragmatic Works Consulting. And today I'd like to talk about Azure Databricks Change Data Capture. So within Azure Databricks, we can process change data capture. And a common use case is customers are looking to form the CDC from one or more sources into a set of Databricks Delta tables. So the goal is essentially to merge these changes into your Databricks Delta. So in other words, we could have a file that comes in on Monday and we ingest that data into our table. On Tuesday, a new file comes in and we want to merge the inserts, updates, and deletes. So let's jump into our demo and see how that's done. So we have an Azure Databricks cluster already created. We've launched it and this is the cluster. Uh, we already have the cluster running. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show is that within the data, uh, you'll see that we have a file here called customer one CSV. And that was simply a file ingested. And I'd like to go ahead and add another uh, table. Uh, we'll call it two. So we'll click on the customer two table. And then what we can do is click on this button. We'll select our cluster. And then we'll click on the preview table. Here you can see what we can name the table. And the first row actually is the header. So we'll click on this button and then we'll click on the create table. What it's doing is ingesting that file and now we have it available for use within our notebook. So we'll go ahead and click on our change data capture notebook. The first thing we'll do is uh, drop these tables if they already exist so we don't get errors further downstream. The next thing we can do is to uh, interrogate our customer one CSV. You'll notice that it has 91 rows. If we interrogate our second table, you'll see that it has more rows. It has 99 rows. So there was an addition of eight rows. So we'll want to insert those and there could be possible changes to the existing data. So the next query we'll go ahead and run here is basically the counts. So you'll see the 91 and the 99. So eight additional rows and possible updates. We'll go ahead and run the next query. And basically you'll see that this particular record changed. So the first file, this was the contact name and the second file, this was the contact name. So we do have an update. So that's a good uh, use case we'll see further downstream. We'll go ahead and run the next. Well, we'll create a delta table based on these fields and we'll insert a U hard coded to identify those as updates and the inserts will have I's. So now we can go ahead and uh, select the same row and see what we get. So you'll see that the sales representative is Annabella Dominguez and that was the the first one. So that's where we are now. Um, so basically, if we exclude that statement and rerun it, we'll see how many rows we get. We'll get the 91. So that's the, the first record, the first ingestion. So what I like to do now is to actually merge those two data sets. And this is the query that we use uh, to merge the data set. So we started with 91, we have 99, and now we're going to compress the data. But the, the records that already existed are going to be updated. And we can go ahead and run our delta table here, and you'll see that it returns 99 rows. And if we interrogate the data, scroll to the right, you'll see that there's a flag field that was added. You'll see a bunch of U's, and you'll see some I's, and the I's are the new records. There should be approximately eight of those. We can confirm that if we uncomment this, and you'll see that there's approximately eight rows. Those are the I's. So then, further down, we're going to go ahead and run this query. And this basically shows, it shows the 11 rows. Those are the deltas. Uh, the deltas are the inserts and the updates. So in other words, we had eight inserts and three updates, and one of them being that record that we showed earlier. Okay, further downstream, uh, this query here, if you describe the table, it'll show you the iterations. So the version zero was the first file, 91 records. The second the version one is actually the 99 records, and it has some useful information here that you can interrogate as well, and it has a list of what it did. So in other words, the first data set ingested 91 rows, then the, the second one, it performed these actions. Um, so that's what it did. And then we'll go ahead and we'll select from the, the Delta table that one specific record, and you'll notice that James Jameson is the current record, which was an update. And that was not the first record that was inserted with the 91 rows. It was the second record, too, that had the 99. So that's how it works. So in other words, you can see how easy it is to process changes over time uh, using the Delta method within the Azure. 
So with that said, if you want to discuss Databricks or have questions on Azure or the Power Platform, please click on the link below for further information. We'll be happy to discuss it with you further. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.